there are eight things that I stopped doing as a food delivery driver. I want to share those with you. Let's get the nastiest and most shocking one out of the way first. What do you think it could be? I deliver food. So the thing that I don't want to do is order my own food by delivery, especially long distance deliveries. There was one time I was out with my son and we had a pickup on the same app, obviously. Uh, it was to a breakfast restaurant and it was two orders. We delivered the first order just fine and it was in the same town as the restaurant. And then my son had to take a pit stop and so we looked for a place. One place looked a little crowded, so we went and found another place. As we were then leaving to go to another city where this long distance delivery was, about three-fourths of the way there, the customer just canceled the order. And I was surprised on Grubhub it said, order canceled. And I thought, well, what do I do now? And I ended up finding out that basically you just throw the food away. And so that turned into, let's have a snack. And we shared that meal. And I recall it was eggs benedict and some hash browns. And maybe there was some fruit in there. Well, let me tell you, it was disgusting. It was warm and I don't want to say mushy, but it was not appetizing at all. So think about it. If you are at the restaurant and you get your food hot, it's good. If you get it short distance delivery in the same town, that's not so bad. But once that food has been cooked and it's in that airtight container, then it's just sitting there cooling down slowly. And I always use the food delivery bags, obviously, just like you should too. But I will say, eating that in the car, it made me realize, wow, I don't think customers really realize, it. are they getting their money's worth when they're paying all that money for the order? And then the driver's bringing the food, they have to pay all those fees and then tip the driver on top of that to enjoy a lukewarm breakfast. Ah, it wasn't very good. A second example of this nastiness is when I placed my own order and I ordered from this ramen restaurant, paid quite a bit for the food, and it was about 10 or 15 miles away. The driver was bringing the food, and when he should have turned my direction, he kept going a different one in order to pick up another order. He never told me that, the app never told me that, but because I'm a driver, I figured it out. Once he finally brought my food, it was warm. I paid a lot for that order. I still tipped him well because I know what it's like to be a driver and he's putting in all the time and miles on his car, but that didn't mean that I got the full value for all the money that I paid for that meal. It was okay. Maybe if that driver had come directly to me, the meal would have been marginal, but I would say it's not worth it. So as drivers think about this, the customer can see you when you're on that delivery. They see all those stops you made. So that time my son and I were out delivering from that breakfast restaurant, the customer saw us go to a house somewhere. They didn't know why. They weren't told. And then it looks like we stopped at another restaurant and then we stopped at another place. And then finally we go on the way to where her home was. So as the customer, what would you think? Are they playing around? Do they care about my order? Are they tampering with my order? I don't know, but I do know the customer canceled the order probably because she didn't want to take a chance or who knows, but because of that, we got to try the food and that's how I discovered, wow, especially a long distance delivery, that wasn't very good. So for customers out there, you should think about this as well. And same food delivery drivers, if you're going to order your own food, just do it from close by. The second thing that I stopped doing, I, I hate to say this, but I quit caring about the customer comments in the order. And there's a couple reasons for this. If they were sincere, then I would adhere to it. But usually I'm seeing those comments once I'm already in the car and I'm ready to head out to deliver it. And a lot of times, let's say it's a McDonald's restaurant and they'll say, get orders of salsa or ranch. And clearly this is from another incident, another order. And so they are not updating it. Also, back in the days during COVID and even since then, customers sometimes try to manipulate and get free things when they're not ordering through the app exactly as it's designed. And they're trying to ask the driver to intervene and get them something that they want. 
And at this point, it's creating a hassle for the restaurant because they need to and want to charge the customer, but it's outside of the order. And then it's taking up time with the driver, delaying us from bringing the customer their order. So overall, I've just basically disregarded those comments unless it's something that's very clear and easy to understand. Along with this, we don't open bags. So to say, please check and make sure this, that, and the other is in there, you're just gonna have to trust the restaurant because time is money and I'm not opening bags to figure it out. The third thing that I've stopped doing is parking close to the pickup location. Why is this? Look at me now, I'm relaxing in this nice, fine, luxury automobile. Sitting for long periods of time isn't good for you. And in the beginning, I would try to park as close as possible, but I don't now. I stay far away for the exercise, and I don't have to generally deal with the congestion of traffic, people banging into my car with their doors, which still happens and is frustrating. So this is something you might consider as well. Just park far away and enjoy that exercise. The fourth thing I've stopped doing is just driving for no reason. Before I did food delivery, yeah, I put gas in my car, but I didn't really think about the impact of driving an hour somewhere for fun or going shopping multiple places, basically driving whenever and however I wanted. I really wasn't contemplating or realizing that that's putting wear and tear on my car and I'm not making money from it, I'm spending money and I'm using my car to do that. So it's really not worth it. Now, having this knowledge also, you know, I don't wanna get carried away with it and always be thinking of terms of time and money, but I do now with my car. If I'm out doing errands, it's nice to do a food delivery order and make up for some of that wear and tear on the car. Something you should consider too. Number five, I've stopped being judgmental. And I hate to say this, but it's natural. We always are judging others by what we perceive. And in this case, the gig apps don't pay us fairly. Tips should be something that are for great service, not as part of our pay, but that's not gonna change. And sadly, the gig app companies try to pay us as little as possible. And I was judging customers going to what I would say are rich areas or poor areas or just in general average and trying to decide, oh, if this is a really rich, nice gated community, surely I'm gonna get a ton of money for this order. And so I found that in working class areas or places you would consider poor, you can't really judge people based on the perception of how they're living, if they're actually gonna tip you or not, because I've had both experiences. I've had what I would say are poor people tipping me really well, and now I understand why. So in light of having my bubble burst dealing with supposed rich people tipping, I've now realized that generally it's gonna matter on if people have worked in a service industry or if people really understand the work that goes into an order and they appreciate the convenience of the driver bringing it to them. So I've become far less judgmental and that's a good thing. Number six, and along the lines of judging people, I've stopped considering our work as just a transaction. Do you realize there are people behind these orders? We don't know exactly why they're ordering. Not all are for a luxury service. There's a lot of people out there that need this service and we're there to provide it. So I've broadened my horizons and I've realized that there are people behind those orders. And so I wanna be as friendly and helpful as possible. I've met people from all walks of life, from students to elderly, to alcoholics, to disabled people. And I've got so many stories and I'll share a lot of those in future videos. So as a food delivery driver, think of this as well. There are people behind these orders. It's not just get on the app, get the order done and on to the next. We are there to help those people and they do appreciate it. Number seven, I've stopped having an empty trunk. When I did rideshare, I would keep it empty because of luggage, but as a food delivery and grocery driver, I have a lot of stuff back there. I have catering bags. I also have a drink holder. I have a folding wagon 
and that really helps with different grocery and catering orders. I also have an extra shirt back there in case I get mine dirty, and for the company to deliver that, I've got that hat and shirt ready to go. And I also have extra food delivery bags. That way I can do double and stacked orders. I'm very well prepared. Number eight, I've gotten rid of my pride. This is a big one and something you should consider as well. As a food delivery driver, you can see how customers treat you. You can see how restaurants treat you. If you walk into any place with this bag, some people look down on you. So if you already think that you pretty much are humble and good natured, then put that to the test. When you're doing food delivery, see how you react when people treat you poorly. It doesn't feel good at all, but I have tried to humble myself. I work hard, I'm earning money, I'm not doing this for charity. And I think it goes a long way if in your life, if you've had a retail job, you're already going to get a preview into how people treat you. When they look down on you, treat you like dirt, talk poorly to you, and overall, they're not appreciating the hard work that you put into preparing their order, whatever that is. So when doing food delivery and grocery delivery, expect the same thing. So I've tried to be a lot more humble and less judgmental of people. So bottom line, people are going to treat you poorly. When they do, you can't help it and you can't help how it makes you feel. But what you can help is how you react to it. So let me encourage you, be humble. Overall, we are gig workers, food delivery drivers, grocery shopping experts, and rideshare drivers. But we're all human beings and we're just trying to earn a living or earn some extra income. We should be able to do that profitably and safely. I've got two opportunities for you. The first, all drivers must watch this video. In there, I break down step by step how to be safe and profitable. Let me encourage you, this is well worth your time. If you've got some extra time, let's learn about the seven habits of highly effective food delivery drivers. I'll see you there.